Are you confused between single tasking, multitasking, multi-threading, multi-processing? Let's take a look at what these things are. A long time ago, computers had only one CPU and they could run only one process or task at a time. Within this process, code could be executed at only one point at a time. So one CPU, one process or task and one point of execution was referred to as single task. Examples of these are like DOS operating system. Times changed, operating systems improved and the ability to run more than one process, maybe not at the same time, but have more than one process loaded in the operating system. However, because there was only one CPU, it could do only one thing at a time. So even though each process would have a point of execution, but the CPU could either be executing here, during which time the others would stop. And if it switched here, the previous one would stop. Now this is referred to as multitasking. Do not use the word multiprocessing because that's something different, which we'll look at. Then, somewhere in mid-90s, operating systems created the concept of threads. So what is a thread? We could have multiple processes or tasks just like before, but now the operating system would allow us to have multiple points of execution in the same process. No, they did not execute in parallel. But now the CPU would switch between multiple points of execution across processes. Let's compare this with uh, a restaurant and a waiter. In a single tasking system, you are at home, you have a butler, he is only there for you, for each and every command that you give him. When you go to a restaurant, there may be multiple tables, that is multiple processes, but each does not require a dedicated waiter so the restaurant would have one waiter for a number of tables. So while he is taking order from one table, he is going to the kitchen, coming back and serving dish to the next one and coming back to the previous table to probably give some water or spoons and he will keep switching between these tables which will go on fine until there are too many tables. So what is multi-threading? Now imagine that on each table you have different people sitting with different customers. Now he has to switch not only between tables, he has to switch between customers sitting across the table. Does it improve the performance? With a single CPU, probably not because now it's running between multiple customers. So multi-threading is the ability to allow the CPU to switch between multiple points of execution rather than just processes. Eventually, multiple CPUs or multiple cores became available. So this is like multiple waiters serving different tables. So we still have multiple processes or tasks. Each task can potentially have more than one execution point, but because we have multiple cores or CPUs, they can do more than one process truly in parallel. Or if need be run 
two execution points of the same process at exactly the same time. This is known as multi-processing. This is multitasking even though there are multiple processes. I know, a bit confusing. Think of this as multiprocessoring. That is when you have multiple processes. So in this case, multiple cores, or multiple processes can execute multiple points of execution within the same process or across. So let's take a look at what really is a thread. A thread is a kernel structure made up of three things. One, it knows where it's going to execute next. That's called the instruction point. Second, and very important, is that it should have its own stack. Yes, that's right. Every thread requires its own stack. So those languages which enable this are multi-threaded like C++ or Java, C Sharp. Others which don't are single-threaded. For example, JavaScript or Dart, they are single-threaded languages because they cannot have multiple stacks. And the third is a set of CPU registers that were there on the processor when it exited out so that next time when the thread gets scheduled again, it can carry back those values and continue from the last point as if nothing happened. So, if you have seen the uh, process map video on this channel, let's see where the thread fits into the process map. You know that a process map is created whenever any program is executed and loaded in memory. It contains multiple segments like code or text, BSS, data, heap and so on. So when a thread is created in the process or for the process, it has three things, instruction pointer, stack pointer and CPU register. So the thread must know where it's going to process next and it should also know where its stack is. So this thread knows where it's executing in main and it has a dedicated call stack for itself. Now if you were to run another thread, this thread would not only know its instruction pointer, but it will also have its own call stack. This is very important from multi-threaded point of view and languages which don't provide this can't be multi-threaded. Now there are some areas which are safe from multiple threads like each thread has a dedicated call stack so the threads are not going to cross over go to some other threads call stack. However, any global variable static variable are accessible by all threads. Similarly, any data which is allocated in the heap can potentially be shared by multiple threads and to safeguard against this, we would need to do what is known as thread synchronization, which is make sure the threads use the shared resources one at a time and not together leading to problems, corruptions, deadlocks. So this is what multi-threading really is.